I was just, I was reflecting on being a writer the other day. And I was talking with my friend Buzzkill, who was uh, on his way up, promising young writer. And it was that kind of manly moment that would be good in a novel, where a particular kind of integrity. And uh, Buzzkill is, 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 is a very laconic kind of person. But in, in the form of a speaker, as if he was a speaker in a story, he had a lot to say. And one of the things he said about being a writer was he, he fell back to something that Joseph Conrad was, had said, which was that you don't write for money, but it's that not, not writing is just worse. And I said, well, I'm a little different than that. Uh, I lack your integrity, but all my life I've had the attention of beautiful women as a writer and an artist. But it's the sparrow-fired English professors who won't publish me. But then I thought about it a little bit more, and one of those English professors, Pachi, who is more like an eagle than a sparrow, had to study the rhyme of the ancient mariner. And the poem, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mangle it by reciting it, but the idea is that the ancient mariner turns up with a story he must tell to those who need it at a wedding. At a wedding that's written by Samuel Coleridge in eighteen thirty four and nobody wants him there. Because he's like a street person at a at a fifty thousand dollar white wedding, but he will tell his story, and that's sort of how I feel about the stories I write. Uh, some of them have been published, but I've been in touch with my friend David Yoten lately. He didn't like the last tape I did very much, and uh, like he said, being Phil Caveney's friend isn't easy but he wanted more of some of the other kind of stories that are a little bit more raucous. I don't know if he's going to get those, but we're going to have what I think is a pretty good story. Yeah, I guess, I guess we'll talk a lot about this. Um, in 1967, okay, well actually let me, I have to pull this sort of together. Actually, this is going to be a tribute to my friend Don Kavanaugh and his daughter Kelly and his daughter Shaney, and his uh, his um, I guess uh, the do yeah the dog's name was Cavy Bull, and his father-in-law was the late uh, detective Chuck Lulling from head of the Madison Homicide Squad, and I first met jo Don probably in 19, oh, 1957 when I was a seventh grader. And Don wasn't quite as big as me. He was very handsome and very strong. His whole family is from Cornwall, the farthest east, west, west point in England, and down around Dodgeville, Wisconsin. And I thought of myself as being a pretty big deal. I was kind of a Buddy Holly type, uh, only with muscles and tough and, and, and everything. And so I decided to throw Don off this little hill he was standing on at, uh, at, in John, next to John Borquist's garage. And I remember the first time I threw him off the hill, and the second time, two times, he dumped me. He just, uh, you know, I just went down in the dirt, and it happened the second time. So two out of three was him. And I looked at him and said, all right, Kavanaugh, you had enough? Well, Don is one of the boys of summer. and He's always been a hard worker. He did a paper route. Uh, he, he and I wrestled together in high school. I remember this boys of summer project that I'm writing on. The day before school started, in 1961, we all went up to the Dells and we rented ho horses 
I think for a buck and a half an hour, and we raided, ra raided an orchard, and we did a bunch of other things that you could do when America was this great country full of opportunity and full of hope, and you didn't have to borrow $100,000 to go to college, and you could actually pay for college by working a summer construction work if you knew somebody on the crew. And so Don sort of kept in my life in different ways. We, uh, we went different directions. Uh, I went to Stevens Point State College at that time, and he went to work for the city water department. But I was, I was in his wedding. I remember renting the tuxedos, and the guy who measured us said, is one of your legs shorter than the other? You wear a size 54 partly, portly. And then I met Don's father-in-law. And Don's father-in-law, uh, Detective Lulling, was really a tough guy. And we were pretty tough guys, too. We were wrestlers and football players. And Chuck had a few too many drinks. He said, I could beat the shit out of any of you. And I said, yeah, but not all at once, Detective Lulling. And so our lives went on, and Don went out to California and uh, got what they call a jack-in-the-box franchise, and then decided that he would come back to Madison. And But the problem was that he had an apartment full of furniture, he had obligations, he had his beautiful wife, Leanne, who was, who was one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life, and so somehow his tough, hard-boiled detective father-in-law paid my airline ticket out to San Jose, California, where Don lived, to drive his wife, Leanne, his daughter, Kelly, and Leanne was expecting, and the dog in a 20-foot U-Haul trailer back from San Jose, California. But there was a little other thing going on. That was one culture. But the other culture was that I got to be at Berkeley in 1969. And 1969 was right after the summer of love. And I remember when I showed up the first day that there were three drug-related murders. But it was in San Jose that I had my brief career as a male dancer. And I remember Don taking me to a place with uh, topless, bottomless go-go dancers. And it was like amateur night. And if you danced with them, uh, you know, the guy that did the best job of dancing with them got a hundred bucks. And I was weighing about 400 pounds at that time and fallen from grace of being an Apollonian heavyweight wrestler to looking like I was a winner in a pie-eating contest or something. He said, caveman, I dare you to go up there. And so I stripped down to my, 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 my boxer shorts with whales on them. And just as I went up to the stage, a bouncer looked at me and said, Sir, it's against California state law to uh, touch her. Now, I'm wondering how, well, yeah, okay. So you got a picture, this is a different time and a different culture. Silicon injections were just invented at that point. And the drums rolled and she said, is that as big as a rest of you? What's your name, big boy? And I said, Harry Hungwell from Bentick, Idaho. Well, I only had one career as a male dancer. And then I did the long, long, long drive back. The last three days, I told them I was on a diet because we didn't have enough food for everybody. Move ahead now, 50 years. And I talk to Don fairly often. Don has Parkinson's disease. Uh, he put, he's putting up the fight he always did. He's been quite successful in business. I advised some people on investment with him, and they didn't. And he's always been glad ever since. So I had not talked to his, the last time I had talked to his daughter, she was an 18-month little girl, 
and now she's this beautiful, wonderful 50-year-old woman taking care of her father, and I'm talking to him over the phone, and I'm making this video for him now. Uh, there's a lot more to say about her father, who is a character in one of my stories, and in turn, a story was made about his life. Now, a lot of my life, since I've sobered up, has been a different life, but I had I had to call. Uh, it's funny I, I I confuse Kelly a little bit with her mother because he looks so much alike, and her mother passed away a handful of years ago. But I remember asking her if she remembered her uncle Dave, and I don't know. I I, I hope Uncle Dave is still living. I'll have to check. But it turns out that in one of my stories. Tavern of Lost Souls. My father is a character, but he's melted into my life experiences. And the character that is me through my father wakes up in a tavern, uh, wakes up in a tavern in Pawtucket, Rhode Island in 1919 in the morning with his father having mur been murdered, looking at a vulture. And the vulture is a real character because I ended up living in a house of disorderly men and Kelly's uncle, Dave, had a pet vulture and in order to get custody of his, babe, his little boy, they had to find a home for the vulture. So there for a period of my life in a house that I didn't live in because I was too rowdy to have around, I had a pet vulture and we used to pass out under the table and the vulture would just look and wait for us and wait and wait and wait. And so I kind of feel that with this whole ream of stories I've got and these stories on the website and such, that at least some of them are going to work their way out because they're good stories and they're real and they're alive. And as a matter of fact, I just talked to my friend David again about research I'm doing on the writer Ralph Ellison who I first read 56 years ago when I was a freshman at Stevens Point State College. Okay. And as you know, my weight loss and food plan is a big part of this. We will be doing book reviews. I'm going to be putting more energy in production. So keep in touch.